Hey, it's Denise. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick, semi-quick uh, follow-up to let you know where I got to with my organization of my seeds. You might remember this box was completely overflowing, stuffed with bags that were stuffed with seeds. Okay, you can see quite a few of those bags are empty. get through a lot of them and others uh, well are not empty. And my new seed container, which is home organizing, a lot of the uh, packets and uh, in case you saw my early morning like I had a bad morning this morning. I woke up at 4 a.m. with migraine and really basically then just could not get back to sleep. I did finally give up, uh, if you see my videos that I posted later in the day, I was actually, you know, dressed and in clothes. Uh, I'm back in my, what I think of as Victorian grandma nightgown. I love these. I got them when they were on sale at Walmart last year. They're kind of like a stretchy, velvety kind of fabric, but you know, they've got like the little, uh, you know, button front and the, the design. Just kind of has an old-fashioned feel, and I like them. Anyway, enough about my Walmart uh, nightgown fashion choices. What I wanted to talk about was how it was going with the seed organization. I was hoping that by the time I showed it to you, it would be like, wow, it's done. But it turns out that the, uh, I think it's 16 compartment, now I showed you that this container, which I bought on Walmart, is sold as a photo and craft I should close it before I hold it, before I drop it all over. It is sold as a photo and craft uh, storage box. It has 16, which is the count of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, yes, 16 of these individual boxes. And I was hoping that would be enough. I wasn't exactly sure what 16 categories I was going to divide my seeds into because obviously I have more than 16 kinds of plants, so things were going to have to get grouped. As I got about halfway through the box, maybe a little more than halfway through, it became apparent that there was no way all those seeds were going to fit in here and that certain categories were going to need more than one container. Certain things that I thought I could group together are probably going to have to be separated. So I ended up at the last minute putting some things together. Rather than cram it, trying to cram more, I just stopped trying to put more seeds in. I actually emptied one out. And I think that's when I combined the melons with a couple other just sort of stray fruits like ground cherries and uh, one or two other kind of berries that were sort of like miscellaneous fruit um, that didn't really need their own container, but they did fit in with the melons, which are really the other main fruit. So it was kind of like, okay, all the fruits go into one. So I have this. Now, you might say, well, then why didn't you go onward? Honestly, part of the answer is the headache didn't go away. It got better. In fact, Patrick and I got some stuff done today. I did get to the uh, landfill to get rid of our recycling or our cardboard, which was something I wanted to get done today. And Patrick, being a good kid that he is, took all the cardboard out to the car, and he is a student driver, so I let him drive to the landfill and back to get a little time behind the wheel. He's doing great with that, getting more confident. So we kind of accomplished two things. He got some driving time and we got rid of the cardboard that's piling up. Now, I've always been a fan of Amazon, but you know, with the whole COVID situation, definitely I am buying more stuff through the mail than I would normally buy. Like rather than going to Walmart, I pick up stuff through walmart.com. So you end up with more cardboard boxes, which means more often trips to get rid of the cardboard boxes or else my dining room would just be a giant stack of cardboard boxes. But back to the project at hand. I can show you the, the, 
progress I've made thus far, keeping in mind that box still has probably about a third of the total seeds. This is probably about two thirds of them. And I still have one outstanding order of seeds with, um, I just went blank, Baker Creek. The order I, the last order I placed, I received a couple days ago. The order I placed a week before that is still showing as processing. So I don't know if like they're waiting for something to come back into stock. I figure I'll give it another week before I contact them to just make sure that there's no problem with the order. But I have never had a problem with their customer service, so I'm not concerned about it. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I did so far. I haven't labeled the cases. My, my kind of thought was like putting a piece of just clear plastic tape that I could then write on with a Sharpie so that, you know, if it from season to season, if I wanted to change it, I could just remove the tape and there wouldn't actually be writing on plastic cases. So right now I have a case of tomato seeds of quite, quite a few varieties. I'm trying to put them back in the same way. I, I have them facing this side they're facing up and on this side they're facing down. Uh, next we have next we have perennial flower seeds. See I don't want to unlock them because I'm taking them out. Here we have annual flower seeds. Several varieties of zinnia. As I've mentioned I love zinnias. They're very easy to grow very colorful. The bees and other good, you know, beneficial insects love them. Highly recommend throwing some zinnias and for that matter also some marigolds, which a lot of bugs do not like the smell of. Also pyrethrum daisies, a lot of bugs do not like the smell of. In fact, a lot of your natural bug repellents use pyrethrum, which is taken from certain plants that contain it because a lot of bugs just don't like going near it. So these are good things to have in your garden. They add some beauty, they attract some pollinators, but they keep some of the nasty bugs away. Okay, next I have uh, peppers, both hot and sweet. Let's back the right way. Next pathetic little thing that only has two in it so far, I know I have more, is summer squash. I know there's more of them in the uh, bags that I didn't get to unpack. Honestly, I really started getting, like like I said, the headache never fully went away today. I've, over since 4 a.m., had to um, see three separate occasions medicate for the headache, so it really has never 100% gone away. Next, many varieties of sunflower. I, should, like, I don't know how much you can see, but there's probably eight or nine at least varieties of sunflowers. I would love to do a nice big sunflower patch if my landlord is okay with that. We have a really big south facing front yard, so it's just a matter of convincing him that, you know, gardening is beautiful and lawn is just lawn that needs to be mowed and you know especially with the whole COVID thing yes it's nice to produce your own food yes it's nice to make your home feel more beautiful and it's also something relaxing that people can do outdoors so I'm going to be kind of nudging him towards encouraging people that it's okay for them to do more gardening. Next I threw all my brassicas together so like broccoli, cauliflower, um, cabbage, kale. Actually, did kale end up with greens? Kale may have ended up in greens. So like, this would be like a whole head broccoli. Uh, this would be um, a purple cabbage. mini broccoli and broccoli rob. I think I showed you these seeds when I ordered them. So they would be like a small early broccoli that just sets small little stems, individual stems of broccoli, not like a, 
it doesn't form a full head of bramble, but you get it much earlier in the season. So I've got my cool weather brassicas in one container. And like I said, this is the one that the last minute I ended up emptying out, which I know I'm going to have to separate certain things. Like, okay, these are the, where I had to stop as far as assorted root vegetables, which I kind of grouped together. Um, radishes, carrots, uh, beets, uh, like I said, a few different kinds of radishes, a few different varieties of carrots, I'm trying to show you one that's more interesting, more beets, uh, these kind of cute little radishes. These ginormous, which is really more of an oddity that uh, I just thought I might give a try. They're like the biggest uh, radishes kind of on the planet. More a curiosity than I actually, it's like a daikon radish, which I don't really like the taste of, but you know, it might be worth it. Uh, oxtail, carrot, ox heart, excuse me carrots, which are just named for the shape. They're sort of large and kind of like your, like your fist. They're like a kind of large carrot, but not a long carrot. They're good for soil, but isn't good for getting deep into. Um, again, uh, I got some kohlrabi in here, more carrots, more beets, a mix of radishes. So yeah, this was the uh, mixed uh, root vegetables. I took them all out and I have to try to shove them back in. This is the problem with taking them all out. Okay. Especially when you're tired and should be going to sleep. I have this bad feeling I'm not going to sleep, and it's probably from taking Puroset throughout the day, which, as I've mentioned before, is uh, full of caffeine, which does make it help headaches, but doesn't help you sleep. So, next we have um, beans and peas, and again, this got full, and I know I still have more beans and peas, so I'm probably going to have to separate out one for beans, one for peas. Because they're also large seeds, so a packet of them takes up a lot more space than, say, a packet of tomato or eggplant seeds, which are really small. Next, corn. Again, large seeds. I've only got maybe four or five varieties, but it pretty much fills up the package. So, I don't think I have many more varieties, but if I do, they would need a separate container. Then again, here's where I'm going to need another container because this one is stuffed. This would be the winter squash. And I've got all sorts of pumpkin, another winter squash in here. And I mean, you can see there's quite a few seed packets shoved in there. And I still have more, so I'm going to need probably two containers of winter squash because I just have a thing. I just have a thing for like pumpkins and the weirder looking the better. I do try to stick to the ones that are not just ornamental. I mean there are ones that are technically edible, but they're very stringy and for people who know their squashes, they would not recommend them. As the best eating pumpkins. So I try to do a balance of the ones that are ornamental and decorative and also the ones that are better eating, especially if I'm going to be canning them to make my own uh, pumpkin puree for, for pumpkin pies and stuff. Where did I live off? Pumpkins, yes. Okay, melons. Uh, I've got a variety of kinds of melons in here see good number of different types both watermelons and sort of cantaloupe types and then some specialty smaller melons 
uh, sort of more exotics that uh, I'm looking forward to trying. Here are sort of the, the oddballs. I've got two varieties of peanuts that are supposed to grow in the Northeast. I got them from Fruition Seeds, who specialize in uh, plants that will do well in the Northeast with our uh, slightly colder climate, slightly shorter growing season. Um, I then have two packets of okra, which honestly I bought last year because the person I was dating for four years was from the South and liked okra. Personally, I find it slimy and I don't care for it. I didn't throw the seeds out just because, uh, but do I really think I'm going to be growing okra? Probably not. But that's kind of why it ended up in the odds and ends. And then I've got some bunching, onion bunching onions. I've got the red ones, and I've got some plain old uh, white bunching onions. I did it again. Bunching onions. There. Does that sound more like the actual words? I've got some amaranth, which is an ancient grain if you're not familiar uh, with it never grown it before. I have a small, totally stunted one that I tried to grow in a pot in my hallway. It's hanging in there. It hasn't died yet. Uh, sunflower, not sunflower, sesame seeds, which again, a sort of just oddball thing. Uh, so th this is like my oddball, uh, random sort of collection that doesn't really fit into other categories. Next, all the different greens. Um, Swiss chard, Mizuna, that uh, corn salad stuff I showed you the other day. So a couple different varieties of Swiss chard. This one's pink. Mizuna, which I've never grown before. It's an Asian uh, green that I've never tried. It's just a, a lettuce mix. This is a uh, rainbow chard. I have actually a bunch of packets of rainbow chard from different places. Purple lady bok choy, which I did grow successfully in my arrow garden this year. It's sort of like a single serve, like maybe the size of your hand, little bouquet of purple bok choy, which is excellent in stir fries. I imagine you could eat it raw like in salad, but to me, it's, a, it's like a cabbage, so I, I cook it. But it, it is very tender, especially if you pick it young. And like I said, it is like a small, you can kind of see if you look at it compared to the, the person's hand holding it, that it is a very small bok choy. And it, I grew it in an arrow garden, and it, it did well in there. I've got my kale in here. I've got, uh, like I said, more rainbow swiss chard, a couple packs of that, because hey, you can never have too much swiss chard. Um, spinach, and then like what I was talking about, I showed it in the video the other day as a plant that I have never grown before. Uh, corn salad, which is supposed to be a cold tolerant, interesting tasting green. So yeah, so this container is just lots of different uh, greens, even if they're not necessarily green in color. But they would, you know, as far as vegetable type, you would consider them greens. Last but not least in what fit in this container is anything that kind of falls under herbs. And that's uh, both culinary What and would you like to play next? Why, why is she who must not be named talking to me. I didn't say her name. Anyway, hmm, I don't know that. She's still talking. You can see I've got quite a few in here. Lots. And like I said, everything from your standard culinary to some that are more medicinal and some that are sort of old, um, really old-fashioned remedies for like sore throat or skin irritation. So 
like I talked about in a previous video, I want to get a little bit back into learning more about making some home remedies from uh, plants that you can grow yourself. Some people have the ability to forage plants that grow wild around them. I'm really not somewhere where that's the case, so it would be more a matter of intentionally planting what I want. Um, some of them are also just plants that are good for teas, like lemon balm, lemongrass, chamomile. So I've got like those kind of seeds in here. So this one is pretty full. Like I said, certain categories in here are going to need a second container. Some categories in here are going to need to be split in two, like the beans and peas. And I still have quite a few seeds to put away. And I'll probably still buy some more if I can get my hands on things that I want between now and the spring. So having the extra space in the second box will be a good thing. And this way they will be neatly organized. Once I finalize my organization, then I'll put the tape on and write with a Sharpie uh, what each one is so that, like I said, I can remove the tape each year if I decide I need to do some reorganization without having permanently marked up the individual containers. And I can even just mark on the outside generally what's in this box versus what's in the other box so that I don't have to sort through every every one. I'll have an idea of what's in each box and it'll make it quicker to find what I'm looking for. So that's the progress I made today. Pretty happy with it. Kind of got as far with the project as I could. I did go on Amazon and order a second one of these boxes. So it'll probably be about a week before I get it because as we know with the whole COVID situation, even if you're a Prime member, getting things in two days has gone out the window. Uh, you still get the free shipping if you're a Prime member and it's something that is a Prime item, but it's not two days anymore. And hey, no point in complaining. I'm just happy to still get it and still get it at a fair price and to get the free shipping. So I look forward to getting the next one so that I can finish up, be rid of the credit cardboard box, and have some organization to my seeds. Once that's done, I will show you the final thing, and it'll hopefully be a nice, neat, quick walkthrough. Um, until then, hopefully you like my progress, hopefully it inspires you if you have a messy seed collection, or they're just kind of thrown in a kitchen drawer somewhere, it inspires you. As I went through, I also, if I had opened packets that I just sort of folded over, I made a point of taking a little piece of tape and closing them so that when I take things out, I don't accidentally spill seeds all over. That's such a waste after you've gone to the trouble of saving them to then accidentally drop them. So it is worth taking the extra time when you're boxing them up to make sure that you tape close any packets that are already open. Uh, so yeah. Please take a moment to like this video, check out my other videos, uh, both on gardening and my other playlists, which are unboxings and reviews, and sort of my opinions on various subjects. Uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I know there are a billion things you could be watching, so I really do truly in my heart, thank you when you take the time to watch one of my videos. Um, it is a, a humbling experience to know that someone took the time to watch something that you took the time to create, and I appreciate that. So have a good day, have a good night, depending on what time it is where you are, and I will talk to you soon, hopefully once I have my second case, and it's all done, and I'll show you the finished thing. Thank you again, and give it a thumbs up.